All right, what's up guys? Today we're going to be looking at the different ways you can encrypt folders on your Synology NAS, as well as looking at the performance overhead of doing so. So really there are just three different ways that you can install the encryption keys so that you can mount the drives, basically decrypting them for use. The first one is the most secure. It's to keep all of the encryption keys yourself. This way, if somebody takes your NAS, there's no way they're going to be able to decrypt the folders unless they also have the keys or the password associated with them. The next, and definitely the easiest, is to just store all the encryption keys on your Synology. They will actually be tied to your exact NAS. So if somebody were to take all of your drives and plug them into a different Synology, they would still not be able to use the keys. However, this has the issue where if your Synology died and you were to get a new one to replace it, when you plug the drives in, unless you had the key or the passphrase, your Synology would be unable to decrypt the drives and everything would be lost. The third option is to take all those keys and store them on a flash drive, always plugged into your Synology. In the case where your Synology were to die, you could still decrypt all the drives because all the keys are on that flash drive. To me, this is probably the best option. It's a good balance between security and availability. Really, you ought to ask yourself, how important is my data to myself versus how important is it to someone else? If it's a backup of a bunch of family photos, it might honestly not be worth it to even encrypt those. The risk of losing all that data is really just not worth it compared to the risk of somebody else getting it. They're your family photos. What are they going to do with them? Those are the kinds of questions you need to ask yourself. Another big one is speed. I'm going to go over it here, but if you do not have built-in hardware for encryption and decryption, you can actually get a huge performance bottleneck because your CPU is having to do all the complex math in order to encrypt a drive. For me, the setup I use is I just have one share folder that is encrypted. And that's the one I put all the critical data on there that I really do not want in someone else's hands. My tax returns, all those kinds of things that I need to keep, but really do not want other people being able to access. Then the rest of my files are photos, videos, and things like that, that fundamentally, if someone were to go all the way out of their way to steal that, it would not be the end of the world to me. I would rather people not have access to them, but somebody would have to break into my house, steal my NAS, figure out how to mount the drives, and all that just to get access to my photos. To me, that's really not that big of a deal. And for me, it's peace of mind. 10 years from now, I know I'm not gonna have an issue where, oh no, I forgot the password and I no longer have a copy of the key. And so all my data is just useless encrypted garbage. So as I said earlier, another big factor when choosing whether or not to encrypt your data comes down to the performance overhead of the encryption and decryption process. So encryption works by doing some very complex math, and that math takes a lot out of a CPU. This is why on Synology's higher end models, they come with what's called hardware encryption. This means there's a special chip on the board that actually handles all the encryption and decryption instead of having the CPU do that. It's a custom built chip, and so that means it's gonna be a lot faster than the CPU at encryption, and it's also not gonna take up a lot of CPU resources when doing so. This is especially important when you're running multiple applications on your Synology, and you don't want somebody encrypting and decrypting data making a huge bottleneck. If you do not have the hardware encryption, then your CPU is going to have to manage all of the math required to encrypt and decrypt data. On Synology site, you can actually filter the NASes down by which ones have hardware encryption and which ones don't. So if this is important to you, I would really look at getting that, especially if speed is important. One thing to note, even with hardware encryption, there still is a very significant performance overhead in writing to an encrypted drive. I found that read speeds are not as affected, but still pretty significant. But I'll go through and show all those tests at the end of this demo. I also all right, so let's go ahead and get started on setting up an encrypted folder on our Synology NAS. So go ahead and log into DSM, and then we're just going to go into Control Panel. And we're going to create a new shared folder. But this one's going to be encrypted. 
As you can see here, this data dump folder has a lock on it. And since it's locked, that means that the folder is currently not mounted. That's that drive that has my critical data in there that I have encrypted. And if it were to be mounted, it would show a little unlock symbol. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new encrypted folder. So all we have to do is hit create and we're gonna name it, I'll call it encrypt. And here is where we can choose encrypt the shared folder. And we've not set up the encrypted shared folders yet, so we don't have the additional option here to add it to that. But we're just gonna go ahead and click that and enter in a password. And it has to be eight characters or longer. And then I'll just turn all of these off. And what it just did there, I don't know if you caught it, is it automatically downloaded the key file to my computer. If we go into downloads right here, we can see right here, oh, by the way, I was testing st stuff here, but we can see right here that it just downloaded a key file, which we can use to decrypt the drive later on. Whatever options you take for this, make sure that that is somewhere other than just your computer. If possible, throw it in Google Drive and add a password to it, but make sure that it's just not at your house in case you need it later on. You want it to be somewhere that you can get access to it 15 years from now without thinking about it. Because encryption is so easy, that it means sometimes you might forget things and might lose things. And if you do, all that data is completely useless. So I'll just give myself access. And so we can see right here, this little unlock symbol means it's an encrypted folder, but it's currently mounted. That means I can write to it. All right, so now if I were to reboot my NAS, when this booted back up, this would be locked. And I would have to go to encryption and hit amount right here in order to use it. I can also go here and just hit unmount. And you can see right here that the lock is there and that means I'm not gonna be able to access any of the files. So let's mount it, and it's going to give us two options. We can either enter the encryption key, or we can import the encryption key. So let's go ahead and just import it. That's that file that was automatically downloaded. So we'll just browse for it, and it's in my downloads, and it should be that one. And just like that, we've mounted the encrypted drive just using the key that was downloaded to our computer. So keep those secure because anyone with those keys and your hard drives can access all the data on them. So right now our setup is that first option I talked about earlier in the video. Basically, we have to manually mount any of the drives we would like to use every time the NAS boots up. It is the most secure, but it does have its annoyances. So let's say we want to set up our NAS to automatically mount the drives as soon as it boots up. So the way we're going to do that is within this shared folder in control panel, we're just going to hit this action and we're going to select key manager. So now we have two options for where to store the keys. We can either store them on the system partition that is basically storing it from within DSM but it is actually tied to the hardware that we're running it on. So if you were to take these drives and put them in a identical but different Synology NAS, then they would not be able to be unencrypted. Or we can use a USB drive, and this is actually what's recommended. So I just have a regular six gigabyte USB drive plugged in, and so let's select that. So if you're using the system partition, it's actually not gonna have you set up a passphrase because it's actually using the machine's ID as that passphrase essentially. But if you're setting up a USB key, you enter a passphrase in here. And so you can also choose to grab all the encryption keys and put them on this drive anytime you add a new encrypted drive here. It's probably what you'll wanna do. All right, and so right off the box, to get to anything here, we have to enter our passphrase. And so now we want to be able to unencrypt that drive that we just set up using this. So we're going to hit add and the encrypt folder we just made. 
All right, and so now we get to choose how our decryption keys are encrypted themselves on the USB disk. So you can either choose machine key or a passphrase. Using the machine key allows you to mount on boot. This is really nice if you'd like to be able to plug this USB drive in, boot up your NAS, and then unplug it. That way, you can keep your USB and your Synology separate. Then someone would need to have the USB drive and the Synology together in order to unencrypt these drives. And it allows for the mount on boot. If you're planning on just leaving a USB drive in there the entire time, and so it mounts up automatically, I would actually just recommend storing it on the system partition because it's the exact same level of security. However, if you would like to be able to store this USB drive somewhere and then plug it in whenever you need to mount the drives, that is a pretty good option without too much difficulty. However, for the most secure setup, you can choose a passphrase. And that way, someone has to know the passphrase in order to decrypt all of these. And this will be that same passphrase you entered when setting up this drive. And here you can choose the two different ways to enter the decryption keys. You can either just enter the key in yourself, which is what you set up, or you can import that file that was downloaded to our computer. All right, and so now let's just test that out. We're gonna hit unmount, and now we're gonna go ahead and mount it. So now it's given us three different options. We have the same two options we had earlier, which is to enter the key, upload the key, or this time, enter the passphrase for the key manager. And that's that passphrase we set up for the USB drive. So let's try that. And just like that, it is unlocked. And so we can access it. All right, and so now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and check out the performance overhead of using encryption. And this is on my DS1819 Plus, which features hardware encryption. And so it should be sped up. So I'll just go ahead and create a identical folder, but this one will not be encrypted. And it has the exact same setup, but this one is just not encrypted. And so now I've powered off all my virtual machines. Nothing's connected to this, but myself right now. And so we should have a fair test between us. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount both of them. All right, so both of these are mounted using SMB. So now we're gonna use Blackmagic Speed Test to go ahead and do a five gig write to them and see what performance it has. So we're gonna do the first one with the encrypted drive. All right, and so I let that go for a little while and it, it pretty much stabilized right around about 190 megabytes per second write speed, and then about 460 read speed. There's gonna be some variance in there, obviously, but we're looking for just rough numbers here. And so that's one thing that we're gonna notice here is that the write speed is heavily influenced while the read speed, not as much. This is due to the fact that the write is having to calculate all of these things and the read is decalculating them. Basically, they're performing two inverse math equations, and so their speed differences can be very large. All right, and so now, let's compare this to a non-encrypted folder. So now I'm setting this up with the unencrypted drive. And let's see what our tests are. And so as we can see here, it's extremely clear. We have huge write speed improvements by not encrypting the drives. And you can also see that the read speeds are almost identical. And so basically what that's showing is that that hardware encryption is able to decrypt the data so quickly that it is not causing any kind of a bottleneck. Now I did do an additional test by doing the same, exact same test but within a virtual machine. That way the hardware encryption would not come into play. But the results I got were augmented due to the fact that there's an additional overhead of running from within a virtual machine. 
but we were able to see more or less the same write speed drop, and this time the read speeds were affected not by a ton, by about 15%. I call that fairly significant, though realistically we have a very large margin of error here due to the strange overhead of working within a virtual machine for a large sequential read or write. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. All right, well that should sum up everything with encryption on a Synology NAS. So go ahead and put any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and go ahead and have a good one. Bye.